What's going on everybody? Scott and Renee here from Up For The Journey. Today's video is awesome. We are doing a collaboration with Big Truck, Big RV on his YouTube channel. So today we're gonna show you really quickly our grand design reflection, the interior, the exterior. We're gonna show you our tow rig. We're gonna give you some quick weights of what everything weighs. If you're ever thinking about looking at this, also just let you know we are full timers. So it's kind of give a peek, a sneak peek of how full timers live. So right now we are shacked up on Cape Cod in Massachusetts, not a bad place to be stuck during these COVID times. It's actually quite beautiful. Unfortunately, we're not at an RV park, so we're just mooch docking in the driveway. Stay tuned. So this is a 2019 Grand Design Reflection 315 RLTS. RL stands for the rear living, which this slot side here has our dinette to uh, theater seats. So this is all the rear living and the TS stands for triple slides. So on the opposite side of the RV, you can see the other slide here. And of course, those two vents signal, uh, signify the refrigerator. This is the bed slide, and this is actually the head of our bed. So we have an east-west facing bed as opposed to a north-south facing bed. I like this, and once I show you inside, you'll know why. So as you can see, our GVWR is just under 11,000 pounds, and we have 5,200 pound axles. So one of our favorite upgrades is upgrading these tires to the Saloon 14 ply tires, the S637 tires, 14 ply. Now the second best upgrade we have is the CRE 3000. I know the shackles are dirty right now, but we upgraded to the self lubing uh, shackle hangers. We also upgraded the leaf springs to the five leaf leaf springs. All those have made such an amazing difference on the suspension and the handling and the ride smoothness and the ride quality of the RV. So with our GVWR being close to 11,000 pounds, We've been through a cat scale before and we know our tongue weight is roughly about 1200 pounds. We use the Centerline TS weight distribution hitch by Husky and this one is rated for 1400 pounds. So we like to use a little bit of overkill just to be safe. And of course your RV wouldn't be complete without the blue boy. So what we have here is a bike rack that comes down. We used to carry our bikes here. As you can see, we just put the blue boy on top, strap it down, and we have our little picnic table that we put the barbecue on. And as for the tow vehicle, we have a 2014 F250. This has the 6.7 power stroke diesel. We added the cab here. Also, you can see we added uh, the racks up here. It holds my mountain bike, my wife's mountain bike, and also holds two kayaks, one 13 footer and one 10 footer. Some of the quick upgrades we've done here, as you can see, I have an air chuck. I have an airline running inside to a Via Air air compressor. Upgrades is the load lifter 5,000 airbags. And then behind that, over here, is the Bilstein shocks. And the upgrade that was done from the factory was these helper springs here. Now, these aren't the F350 helper springs. These are way more heavy duty than the F350 heavy uh, springs that they put on the stock F350. Yes, I know this is an F250, but this suspension is beefed up. So other than the suspension upgrades, um, we have a couple engine upgrades. We have a performance exhaust, we have an intake, and we also have it programmed. So we do get a lot better gas mileage and we get a lot more horsepower than stock. Find out that right at 67 miles an hour, 65, uh, six 67 miles an hour is the sweet spot at the rpms we have 353 gearing on this rear end so right at that 66 67 miles an hour is the best miles per gallon that we get and it's roughly about 11.6 to 12 miles per gallon towing this almost 11,000 pound rig. GVWR for the F250 is 10,000 pounds. Our front is a 5,200 pound axle and our rear is a 6,100 pound axle. I'm not too sure on our payload capacity. 
All right, so we're gonna follow Lily into the RV. So first thing you come to is this door, and that is the bathroom. One thing we like about the RV is there's a very spacious restroom, you know. The only thing we did change in here, other than the paint, is you can see this is more white than the tan. We did change out the faucet. The other one was really low and you could barely put your hands in. But the shower here did upgrade the um, shower head to the Oxygenics. Very roomy. As you can see, we put one of the uh, shower caddy poles in here. All right, so from the restroom and into the main area, we have Renee, and this is the area that we live in most of the time. So, honey, go ahead and tell them what you like about it. Um, I love how big and open it is. It definitely feels like a house. As soon as we walked in this floor plan, we just fell in love with it immediately. And um, it has a lot of storage, even though it doesn't necessarily look like it, but we have everything we need in here. Yeah, and we did look at the bunkhouse version of this, which we thought was gonna be more storage, but after we kind of did some looking around and snooping, this, there's all kinds of storage all over the place. And it really equated to more storage with an open floor plan, which we love. For what we needed. With for the, what we, exactly. With for, the family, you definitely want the bunkhouse. Yes, definitely. So since we don't have any kids, other than Lily, she does not need her own roof. <laughs> so moving on down the hallway here, we definitely have our, uh, you know, the bedroom. And uh, one thing we do, little kind of a tick, tip and trick here. We put these uh, hangers on here. You know, normally we hold all Lily's harnesses and leashes, but you know, during COVID times, the new things we're hanging on here are our masks. You know, if you're not hanging them off your rear view mirror, you're hanging them off in your RV somewhere. Same thing with the back. We got another one that holds our belts, our workout elastic bands and our hats and whatnot. Renee did paint the walls in here as well to make it a little brighter, but everything's standard in here. Um, I did put some wallpaper here and if you follow our Insta or if you've been following our Instagram You've seen this before when we installed it now earlier when I mentioned the reason why we like this east-west bed So right now we're looking at the nose of the RV the east-west bed allows us to have this whole closet area open It is set up for a washer and dryer combo. There's water connections back there and then just a power plug on this side. But as you can see, we have our supplies, we have our printer that stays there, and then just all our area for shoes. And then of course, this goes into the cubby down below, but we have it as a hamper. We put an Ikea bag down there. So we have the standard queen size bed. We did upgrade it to the Tulo bed in a box. It's much more comfortable than the standard one. This is just a, a Quick store hanging storage and then some shirts and pants down there. Plenty of power outlets. We got a power outlet down there and there's also a power and a USB outlet down there so we can charge our phones or alarm clock or as uh, Big Truck Big RV says and thinks about the CPAP machine. So you can definitely plug in your CPAP machine down there if you need one of those. All right, so since we've chosen the rear living, what have been your dislikes that uh, you're not fond of in the RV here, honey? Um, well, it's not really the floor plan itself. It's just the brown. There's so much brown in the RV. Yeah. Everything's brown. Yeah. <laughs> the one thing we do like is the new 2020 Imagine line has the, the uh, reflection too. The reflection it's, as well. Yeah, it's like a grayish color. Yeah, it's not so much brown, and I know you're a fan of that. Yeah. So as you can see, the walls here are this tannish with a texture, and Renee did paint the bathroom, and it's more of a... Uh, a flat white. But other than that, that's your pretty much the only dislike, yeah. right? And then I guess to be on the positive note, one of my favorites is the fireplace. I never thought I'd want a fireplace in an RV, but. Yeah, who knew you were gonna love, or we both were gonna love a fireplace. All right guys, so the one thing that we absolutely love about being full-time RVers is the experiences that you have and the people that you meet. We've met so many people on the road that are RVers and non-RVers, and it's just fascinating. We would have never met these people by staying at home. And, you know, just the freedom to roam and go where you feel like you need to go. So with that and these wonderful times of COVID, you know, what's next? What are we going to do? Uh, well, we're supposed to be heading out in about September to make our way back to Florida, fingers crossed. Um, <laughs> yeah. We're going to hopefully make our way back slowly because when we came up in March, we really rushed to get up here because COVID was just starting and we didn't know what to expect on the road. So we really just drove over like a couple of days, got here. But we want to try to do some hiking in Pennsylvania, 
kind of see yeah. maybe Virginia. It's just going to really depend on what travel restrictions are, if we have to quarantine for 14 days or, you know, what the rules will be for us to go and visit those states. Yeah, so we're very excited about that. So thank you so much for joining us. I'm Scott. This is Renee. We are known as Up For The Journey. Thank you, JD, with Big Truck, Big RV. Make sure you subscribe to both our YouTube channels and go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. Have a good trip, everyone.